welcome to Screening Room. Very special show for you today. We're going to be talking about movies that are so bad that they're good. Coming up, we got reviews of Sharknado, The Room, and Anaconda. So stick around because Screening Room is going to be right back. Welcome to Screening Room. My name is Quinn Fitzsimons here today with Matt Riley and Liz Jenner. Uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of bad movies, but bad movies that we kind of like, you know. So right now, let's get right into it. Throw to Matt with his review of Sharknado. Thank you, Quinn. So first off, our review is going to be of Sharknado. Uh, it is a comedy slash horror slash sci-fi film. Um, it takes place in Santa Monica, California, where a big hurricane is coming off the coast of Mexico into California. And uh, it starts off with Ian Ziering as Finley and uh, Baz, his best friend, they're surfing in the water. And then all of a sudden a huge hurricane comes and destroys his bar. And then later on they try to leave the bar and then they go to uh, his ex-wife's house who is Tara Reed, which is, uh, she plays April, um, and they get out of that house, and then they save some other people in a bus, and then there's some huge water spouts that form a huge tornado, and then there's thousands and thousands of sharks that appear in those tornadoes and just shoot all across uh, Santa Monica, California. Um, so um, anything else about the Sharknado? Um, <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys do? You guys have anything else on it? Or? Yeah, no. Let's say I think we have a trailer. So trailer if we could take a look at the trailer, that'd be nice. Flooding here. You're not the plumbing, the ocean. You need to go home. I'm not going anywhere. Storm's coming, it's coming fast. <laughs> Just can't sit back and watch this. Tornado's heading towards the airport. We need to destroy it before it gets to them. Watch out! You can't just wait here and wait. Sharks are rain down on us. into the tornadoes. It's too dangerous. Too many of them. We're going to need a bigger chopper. Body of food! It's time to leave Kansas, man. So in my opinion for the review of Sharknado, I thought it was a decent movie for being... Uh, continued bad movie. Um, I thought that there was a lot of good scenes. Uh, my favorite especially uh, it makes me laugh a lot when I see just thousands of sharks just somehow having the ability to jump at people and just fall out of the, uh, out of the tornado and just kill just a bunch of people. Um, but I also thought it was kind of gory. Um, other than that, um, <clears throat> I thought that the acting was decent, although the budget for the movie was only $1 million, so they couldn't cast that good of uh, actors, and they couldn't put that much into um, uh, like their budget for traveling and green streams and other stuff like that. Um, so I just want to know what you guys thought of the movie as well. Uh, yeah, um, so this movie, obviously, it's called Sharknado. You know, it's, they made it knowing who they're marketing to, you, someone on the couch, it's like one in the morning, you know, <laughs> their second bag of Cheetos or whatever, right? right? Yeah, so like obviously the Sharknado people know who they're marketing to, and so I can't really fault this movie for anything that it does, just because I think sci-fi has got that, it's covered with, oh, we can put just like Tara Reid and like John Harden here, you know, and then they'll, that'll cover our cameo and that's like half our budget, right? And then they can just put whatever else motive storylines they can in it you know i just want to see sharks and tornadoes 
<laughs> right. That's why I watch this movie. Yeah. Right. I think it is important to point out too that it's a made for T V movie. Yeah. So it's yeah. probably not gonna be as good as a bigger budget movie. But that being said, I never got into the hype of Sharknado when it first came out. Like I had never seen it until this past week. Uh, but I thought I was gonna go in hating it and I started watching it and I was like I want to see how this ends. <laughs> yeah. Like, how does the shark tornado end? So, yeah, I actually kind of liked it. Yeah, very, like, the characters in it, I will say, are very creative in how they handle the situation. You know, there's that whole scene where they, like, repel from the bridge to yeah. save the kids from the yeah. bus, right? Like, they just had climbing gear with them, I guess, yeah, exactly. you know, right? But I think you know, that's what makes this movie enjoyable, is just they have these MacGuffins that don't make any sense that advance the plot in a way just to have a shark come through a window. You yeah. know, like that's the ultimate goal, I feel like, of every character in yeah. this movie. Yeah, yeah. And, and I agree with the creative ways of killing the sharks. Um, they had uh, the bombs uh, thrown into the tornadoes to blow yeah. up the sharks yeah. and to stop the tornadoes. Um, they also had, somehow, Finley was able to get a chainsaw and he cut up a couple of the sharks. Um, using the oxygen tank and shooting it to yeah. blow up the shark. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then also John Hurd was using his uh, his stool from the bar to kill yeah. sharks and break. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't say anything bad about my stool now. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, any other thoughts you have on the movie? I think we've said everything. I mean, like honestly, Sharknado, it's enjoyable, and you know what you're gonna get, right? And that's why I think people like this movie and why it's become famous. You know? yeah, yeah, for sure. Well. I think that's enough on Sharknado right now. Uh, so we'll be back right back with more Screen Room, but we're going to take a look at some of those adorable, perfect pets. Hi, I'm Copper. I'm a down-to-earth seven-year-old coonhound. I'm a sucker for a relaxing walk in the outdoors, but I also love just hanging out with my parents at home. Yippee! We're Hannah and Emily, two 12-week lab mixes ready for a playful home. My sister and I are full of energy. We're both troublemakers and love making mischief. Hi, I'm Naska. I'm a pensive four-month-old kitty that can be nervous at first, but really just a curious little kitten. Well, hey there! This is Mama Kitty here. And I'm just a friendly feline, and I'm looking for a forever home. To find out more about adoption for these pets or others, contact the Cooley Region Humane Society at 781-4014. All right, welcome back to Screening Room. Those were some pretty cute, perfect pets. If you have any interest in adopting them, you can find them at the Cooley Region Humane Society. All right, so now I'm going to get into what I love talking about. I love this movie. It's called The Room. Uh, it was written, produced, directed, and starred in by the same man. His name is Tom Rousseau. I actually have a little bobblehead of him right here. I got this for my 18th birthday. It's one of my most prized possessions. Uh, but so anyway, it takes place in San Francisco and follows Johnny, who is a lumbering Frenchman with like a loose grasp on the English language. All right, and Johnny's got it all. You know, he's got a fiance that loves him. You know, a friend that's loyal. You know, he's, he's supporting an 18-year-old orphan named Denny's financially for some reason that's not really explained in the movie, but, you know, like he's doing something nice, right? But this all goes away when everyone around him for no reason decides to sabotage his life. And I guess that's the best way to describe this movie's plot because this movie's great, but not because of any masterstroke of, like, writing, directing, or acting, but just because it's, like, one of the worst attempts at professional filmmaking ever. And as I said before, Johnny has a loose grasp on the English language, and that same thing goes for Tommy Wiseau. He wrote this uh, script and he reads it like he is reading it for the first time, doesn't really understand the dialogue that he wrote. Uh, scenes are poorly shot, poorly acted, and they lend little to the development of the characters. But combine that with the movie's serious tone and it somehow becomes one of the best comedies of all time, uh, check out the trailer for The Room. Yes. 
as you can see, incredibly corny, just incredibly melodramatic, but very, very unintentionally funny. I think Tommy Wiseau was very well intentioned in making this movie, but just honestly didn't have the grasp on the English language. He's a Frenchman. Uh, originally, you know, is the English is a second language, and I think that adds a lot to this movie's humor factor. There's a lot of weirdly paced scenes and weird interactions to be between characters. Like, it just makes this movie quirky and funny. I think it works really well, um, especially if you go into it with the mindset that it's a comedy. But uh, what do you guys think? What are your thoughts on The Room? Well, this movie has been deemed the worst movie ever made, mm. and I think it earns that. This is the worst movie I have <laughs> ever yeah. seen. The first two lines he says, I was like, oh, no. It's, yeah. it's rough. It's got some really bad acting, and I could, not just, I could not get into it. It was a little too much for me. <laughs> the bad acting, the sets were a little off for me. I did not enjoy this movie. <laughs> Yeah, I can respect that you are very passionate about this movie, Quinn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I am more on Liz's side here. I get that. Um, I, I do think the movie's very quirky and weird, um, but I don't think that it's all that bad. Um, there's a couple of parts of the movie that I do like, um, especially when uh, Johnny says some funny quotes like, you're tearing me apart, Lisa. Yeah, you're tearing me apart. Yeah, and um, the green screens, I think, are kind of funny, kind of get to me a little bit. Um, but uh, the, one of the other parts I like is kind of where uh, how uh, Johnny kind of gets revenge on Lisa because uh, of Mark saying that she, that he doesn't love Lisa at the end. So I feel like that's kind of redemption for him. So not all is bad for him. Yeah, not all is bad for him. I mean, the thing with this movie that really gets me is that there's just no plot to it. You know, there's no real plot line. There's no character arc to the, any of the characters in this movie except maybe for Lisa, but she just becomes mean for no reason, you know, right? So that because of that, I understand why both of you would say, like, oh, it's a bad movie, because it is a bad movie. It's a very, very bad movie. Um, I just think it, it's funny. It's funny. You have to just laugh at this man that self-financed a film that he thought was going to be great and then premiered it in a theater to have people laugh at him, you know, and now he's just owning it. He's just released it as comedy, you know. It, it's, I don't know, it's a special movie to me. All right, well, now we're going to take a little bit of a break. Uh, let's check out what's going on with Com Club. We'll be right back. to look at the movie Anaconda. Anaconda takes us on a journey with a documentary film crew who is looking for a mysterious lost tribe in the depths of the Amazon. The crew consists of Terry, the director, played by Jennifer Lopez, a cameraman, Danny, played by Ice Cube, a sound engineer, Gary, played by Owen Wilson, along with an anthropologist, uh, production manager, and a uh, boat captain. While on their way to find this long lost tribe, they happen upon Paul Cerrone, whose ship has crashed. Now, Paul, Oh, excuse me. Sarone uh, um, is, get this, a snake hunter, but he regrets to inform the crew of this, and so he tells them that he can help them find their long lost tribe. But he regrets to inform them that they're, he's actually hunting for a 40 foot long man eating snake. Now, while on this trip, the crew uh, encounters trouble with their boat and mm, a lot of life and death experiences, which allow Cerrone to take control of the boat and uh, along with the crew. Um, so the crew encounters poisonous wasp, uh, explosions, and a crazy madman. Let's take a look at the trailer. All right, everybody, double check your gear. 
Make sure it's all on board. Pray you didn't forget your bug spray. They have come to the world's most isolated jungle to explore the unknown Amazon. You ready? I think so. And conduct scientific research to prove the existence of a long lost tribe. Shashama worship giant snakes. Anacondas as gods protect us. What is this? Anaconda skin. Is snakes up there this big? This skin is three or four years old. Whatever shed it has grown since then. Snakes don't eat people. Oh, they don't? That's it, man. I'm getting the hell back to LA. It's always good to be prepared. Now, they are the ones being watched. Do you hear that? The ones being followed. Nobody move. The ones being hunted. Is there something down there? That's right. No, I really mean it. I really mean it too. But not by anything human. Hey! That's from the smoke! Yeah! If we help him, then he will help us get out of here alive. Get him the face! You're gonna get us all killed! Ah! Anaconda, when you can't breathe, you can't scream. All right, so Anaconda has a lot of creepy underwater shots, a lot of ominous music, and it kind of resembles Jaws, but set in the jungle and with a giant snake, and it's not as good. So what did you guys think of Anaconda? Well, I think, first of all, when you start talking about Anaconda, first thing people bring up is John Voight's character, uh, Paul Sharon, the snake hunter. <laughs> um, John Voight, great actor. Obviously, he won the act. He won the Oscar for best leading actor for Deliverance. Er, not Deliverance. I can't remember. It was in the '70s, though. Um, he was in Deliverance, and then he comes to this movie as a Paraguayan snake hunter. Yeah. You know, and he's he's using this cheesy accent, like just general South American accent. You know, and I just can't take him seriously the whole movie. You know, he he's overacting more than. Um, Nicolas Cage, I would say, <laughs> in a lot of these, you know. And he was the father of Nicolas Cage in National Treasure, you know, right? So you'd think, like, he'd be aware of this. No, nah, he clearly did this for the paycheck. And I think that I did, it almost turns his character into comic relief. For me, yeah, you know, if you can get through John Voight's horrible accent, but he's even more horrible ponytail, I think oh, you can get through the whole yeah. movie. Yeah, oh, his greasy ponytail. <laughs> this is is oh, so it's bad. awful. What'd you think, Matt? Um, I thought the I thought the movie had a good plot, unlike uh, The Room and Sharknado was yeah. okay. But um, so yeah, I thought it had a good plot. Um, I liked how um, I like how John Voight was being secretive. How they didn't know that he was uh, like he was looking after the anaconda mm -hmm. because the whole entire. Uh, film cast was looking after, um, they're looking after that secretive tribe. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought that was a good plot in the movie. Um, uh, other parts of it, um, I thought they were okay. Like you said, the accent of John Voight, yeah, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't like that too much. Um, but other than that, it was my favorite out of the three movies. I'd have to agree with you on that. Yeah. <laughs> the, one that it, the plot, and even though not really realistic, well, I guess yours was probably the most realistic, but the delivery of it was probably the worst. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I definitely agree that this was at least my favorite out of the three. Yeah, I think this movie, it being a major motion picture, definitely contributed to that. Like, again, it had a budget of $45 million in 1997, which is pretty substantial, especially for this kind of horror movie. And also, they had a pretty star-studded cast. You know, they had John Voight, they had Owen Wilson was in this movie, yeah. uh, Jennifer Lopez was in this movie, Eric Stoltz was in this movie, and... Ice Cube was in the movie. Ice Cube was in the movie, yeah. And Danny Trejo, I think, makes like yeah. a third. So obviously, it's a very like star-studded cast, you yes. know, which is why it's surprising that you get this kind of so-so acting from most of them, especially John Voight, um, and sort of these almost like comedic scenes, like there's a scene where they pan over the boat and everyone's like fine, and then they get to John Voight in a hammock, and he's just kind of like dead-eyed with his bottom lip sticking down, you know, and you're just he's like, or something, <laughs> right? And you're just like, John Voight, like, are you trying to be intense, or are you just 
dead or like <laughs> what's going on, right? You know? Yeah, I can agree with that. Uh, another part where I don't like in the movie is when uh, John Voight gets eaten by the anaconda, and that grosses me out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's high. And then spits spits John Voight back up, and that. That makes me very queasy. I don't know what it yeah. is. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and no. it's the 90s again, but with such a big budget, the CG snake, I could not get over how terrible the CG snake was. Yeah. It was yeah. so bad. Yeah, you could easily tell when it would switch, because they had an animatronic yeah. snake, and you could easily tell when they would switch between that and the CG. Uh, like when the snake grabs that dude falling out of the waterfall from the yeah. tree bench, right? You're like, yeah. snakes can't move that fast. <laughs> right? Especially grab this a full-grown man out of the air. Much less. Yeah. Well, I guess people must have liked this movie a lot because they made four other movies. They did make four they other movies. They made four other Anaconda movies. Yes. Uh, David Hasselhoff is in one of them. That's really <laughs> the only other one I know about, but he's the only famous person in it, and he's in it for like three scenes, which I think is hilarious. But he's like the top billed actor, yeah. you know, right? So you're just like, why even have David Hasselhoff in this, right? Uh, but so anyway, um, what about other like bad movies that you like? Are there any other bad movies or guilty pleasures you know you want to talk about? There is okay. So you guys remember how the world was supposed to end in 2012? Mm -hmm. They decided to make a movie about that. Oh yeah, oh, I don't but that. the world didn't end because people survived. So I was like, uh, plot hole, because everyone's supposed to die if the world ends. But yeah, true. It was more like humanity a, survived. A natural disaster. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Oh, it was a really bad. It should just be called really bad earthquake. And then in parentheses, 2012. Yeah, it was like, what's that? The day after tomorrow. It was the like after the tomorrow. day after yeah, tomorrow. It was like a bad day after tomorrow. It was a really bad day after tomorrow. Yeah. One of my favorite um, really bad movies is Wild Wild West. Have you seen that? I have not. Uh, it takes place in the American West, obviously the Wild Wild West, and Will Smith plays a U.S. Army Marshal that's hunting for an ex-Confederate mad scientist who's building a giant mechanical spider in a canyon in <laughs> order to take over the United States of America. Um, just full of campiness, you know, every dialogue is just kind of like one-liners or whatever, right? And then Kevin Klein's in it, and he has a really bad, cheesy performance. Selma Hayek is in it, and she's actually one of the highlights of that movie just because, you know, she, they, she didn't do anything, right? Like, they didn't yeah. give her character anything, so she's just a normal person um, in that movie. Yeah, uh, anything. Yeah, otherwise, the one that I, I think of the most is uh, Lake Placid. I don't know if you guys have... I've heard of Lake Placid. That's the one with the crocodile. Right? Yeah, with the crocodile. Yeah. And it reminds me of Anaconda a little bit, because uh, in the movie, there's just a bunch of water type just in the jungle sort of areas. Mm. Um, and so there's this huge crocodile that uh, that's in the... I think it's like a lake, because Lake Placid, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, so there's a, there's a bunch of like teenagers who get together, and the, the crocodile just eats all of them. It's just unrealistic. Uh, yeah. CGs are bad. It just reminds me of a lot of these movies. Yeah, well, it's actually uh, funny that you compare it to Anaconda, because they actually made a Lake Placid versus Anaconda movie. Oh, I Yeah, I, I think it was straight to video. It was like the fifth Lake Placid and like the sixth Anaconda or something like that that oh, they wow. made. Yeah, uh, so I, I bet that would be just incredible, you know, yeah. I, Lake Placid versus Anaconda. I really hope there's a, a snake versus crocodile fight somewhere out there. Yeah, I'll have, to, <laughs> I have to look at that for sure. Yeah. Uh, Liz, you said that there was uh, four other types of anacondas? Are yeah, kind of there's five and well six in total. Yeah, maybe? counting the Lake Placid one. Right? Yeah, and it's funny how with all these bad movies they seem to make a lot of them. Yes. Which yes. it's yeah. like the Final Destination movies. Yeah, they're not. They're not them, yeah, actually. they're not the greatest, and you, maybe they're just trying to get it right the whole time, but they're pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Final Destination one. I think you could argue for, for Final Destination one being a good movie. Uh, I, I personally have only seen bits and pieces of it, but they're, they're, it's, it's fairly decent acting. Acting in uh, Final Destination one. Um, so Ghost Rider. Have you guys seen Ghost Rider? It's the worst comic book I movie ever. So <laughs> I think I've bad. seen bits and pieces of Ghost yeah, Rider. Yeah, Ghost Rider. Nicholas Cage just him yeah, screaming is like half of that movie. <laughs> which uh, I mean, I you can't get much better than Nicholas Cage screaming and turning into a skeleton for like an hour and a half. You know. <laughs> yeah. For sure. And yeah. with the room. Uh, do we want to talk about The Disaster Artist, a new movie? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I want to talk about that. Um, so coming out to theaters soon, starring the Francos, Seth Rogen is in it, uh, Paul Shear is in it. It's The Disaster Artist. It's the story of how they made The Room. Really, really interesting. Tom Rice himself funded it and directed it. So I think it's going to be an interesting parody take 
you know, yeah. uh, on, the, on what goes on behind the scenes yeah. of movies in general, and then also specifically The Room, because this is just such a special story. There's also a book out uh, called The Disaster Artist that was written by Tommy Wiseau's co-star, Greg Sestero. So if you haven't checked that out, you should check it out. And unlike Room, this one's supposed to be good. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to be yeah. good. I'm very excited. It's yeah. supposed to be and good. I, I do like the Franco fun. Brothers, so I'll definitely yeah. look at it. You said it's supposed to come out later this year? Yeah, I think in October it's coming in out. In October, yeah. 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 Um, and maybe in November. I might be wrong on that. Uh, but adding on to that, let's check out what else is going to be new in theaters coming up. So new in theaters, we have Happy Death Day. I actually see that. It comes out on Friday the 13th. Looks pretty good. Mm. Goodbye, Christopher Robin, Breathe, Marshall, and The Foreigner. I would go see The Foreigner. Just Jackie Chan. I haven't seen Jackie Chan yeah, in a while. Coming back. Be, uh, yeah, um, coming to DVD. Coming up, we have Vikings, uh, the new Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man Tell No Tales, Churchill, the story of Winston Churchill, and The Wizard of Lies. So check those out. Parts of the Caribbean, Dead Man, Tunnel Tales. I have not seen that, but I heard it's really good. I, I mean, really? Yeah. I would definitely go yeah. see that movie. Yeah. There's yeah. something about Parts of the Caribbean. You know, Johnny yeah. Depp is just yeah. such a good Jack Sparrow. Yeah. Right? And plus, I've seen all the other ones, so I don't know why. I would yeah, say yeah. yeah, just keep up with the saga. Yeah. Uh, and all right, at the Riv, uh, we have Dunkirk. Uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, who I like Spider-Man Homecoming. Spider -Man. That's Spider-Man Yeah, Homecoming. best Spider-Man oh, I loved opinion. it. Uh, uh, Wind River, and then Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman was also good. Yeah, Wonder Woman was great. Yeah, I loved Wonder mm -hmm. Woman. I've heard good things about that one as well. Yeah, definitely the best DC movie entry, I would yeah. say, for that. Yeah, I'm excited to see how the new Justice League movie will be. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, so... That's going to do it for us here on Screening Room today. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I was Quinn Simons. Here today was I'm Matt Riley. And I'm Liz, Liz. Jenner. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks.